We're going to have a look at the summary of the various shapes that a frequency distribution uh, can take on. And these are in no particular order, because that really depends on where the scores uh, are all bunched up. So the first type of, uh, I guess, shape is a positively skewed shape uh, distribution, and the y-axis is the frequency column, uh, the x-axis is the score, or the, or, or the scores. And if the bulk of the scores, or most of the scores, are bunched sort of toward the, the left-hand side, but there might be a few really high values, okay, large values that are on the right-hand side or on the positive side, so in other words, it's got a positive tail, uh, we call that positively skewed or a positively skewed distribution. And what tends to happen is that the mean is generally greater than the median. Okay, so the median would be somewhere, maybe somewhere here, and the mean might be a bit further up. Okay, and the reason for that is because of these high values, the high values affect the mean, doesn't affect the median so much, and it tends to pull the mean toward the, the positive side or toward the positive tail. Next we have negatively skewed, this is basically the same thing as positively skewed except flipped uh, the other way around. So you have the bulk of the data, uh, might be, you know, it's to the right hand side, so toward the positive side, but there's a few low scores, okay, so that form a tail. So it really depends on where the tail is, so the tail's on the negative side, so we call it negatively skewed. An example of this would be, for example, um, yeah, maths exam scores. Most of the class did really, really well, so they'd have all their marks here but there might be one or two or three students that did quite poorly, so they'd be down the bottom here. Both of these types of distributions, uh, I guess, uh, invoke questions, you know, and, and why, why are these tails there? And, and that's really the question we should be asking. So if, if those tails start to appear, we need to ask ourselves, for example, if these are exam scores, is the exam too hard? There might be a couple, two or three kids, um, for example, that did really, really well, um, but, but the bulk didn't do so well. Uh, on the other side, uh, you know, maybe you know, a whole lot of students did really well because maybe the exam was really easy or maybe the whole school, or maybe most of the class studied and there might be two or three or, you know, um, students who didn't do too well because they didn't study or for whatever reason did, did, did badly um, and therefore, you know, th these sort of questions need to be raised. Okay, so again, uh, with negatively skewed, the mean tends to be less than the median because of these lower scores. So the mean might be down here and, and the median might be a bit, bit further along, okay, where the, where the middle of the scores are. Moving along um, to sort of a, a well-behaved type of distribution called a symmetrical distribution and it's exactly that because, uh, you know, it's called that because the distribution is symmetrical. Um, the mean and the median tend to be roughly sort of in line with each other, so toward the middle, okay. So these are sort of the, the, the quite well-behaved distributions. The bell curve as it would be an example of a, of a symmetrical um, distribution. Okay. Next we have these kind of strange distributions. Uh, for example, we have something called a bimodal distribution. We can see uh, here that there's two, two peaks, okay? uh, kind of like a two, two, two camel's humps. And you know, there could be, again, uh, causes for this. So we could be, for example, uh, surveying two different age groups and maybe measuring their heights. So it's pretty clear that the two different age groups um, are going to have two different sets of heights, but we've somehow combined them into into the one distribution. So something like this would, would I guess, um, give us the, the indication that maybe we've grouped um, you know, two groups together that probably should not have been grouped together. Uh, I'm not saying this is a wrong or a bad distribution, it just gives us the indication that maybe we need to look a little bit deeper into this, maybe there are cl two clear groups that maybe we should separate and um, uh, survey separately. Okay, so uh, there's two what we call two modal peaks. Okay, there is trimodal, multimodal, four, five, six modes, um, but I'll just show them the bimodal there. Okay, next we'll have a look and two other, two other aspects that we need to consider um, which also affect the shape of a distribution. Um, one of them is um, an outlier or outliers. Okay, so maybe I should uh, put that in, in, in brackets there because there might only be one outlier but there might be several. Um, you might have the bulk or well, pretty much all the data except maybe one or two scores, maybe all on one side of the distribution. There'd be nothing, absolutely nothing um, for you know, a, a certain gap of, of nothing, 
and then you might have one data item or one score appearing on its uh, um, sort of lonely self way off. Okay, so clearly, clearly removed from the main group. So one would have to ask the question, how did this outlier get there? Well, what, what happened? Um, it will, depending on, well, it depends on what the context is. So it really depends on what it is that we're surveying. Okay, so outliers uh, need to be investigated. Okay, and they will show up as kind of like a little blip right off, right off to the side. It could be the other, other way around too. We might have this part, um, the bulk of the data on, on this side and the outlier on this side. So it doesn't really matter as long as there's a big gap in between. And the last one is uh, clustering. So clustering, it's a bit like the, the, the bimodal. Um, it could be you know, trimodal. You'll see two distinct groups of data. Now I'm not saying that there's necessarily, uh, it's empty here between B and C for example. Okay, but clearly um, we've got two groups or, or two clusters. So uh, this may be related, it could be related to uh, multimodal um, or, or bimodal or trimodal um, distributions. Uh, but as long as if you can see two distinct groups or, or where you can maybe separate, uh, you can clearly see that there's a, you know, the bulk of the data between a, a certain range, um, say here between AB, there's a, a, a group of data there. Between CD, there's another group of data there. We could see two clusters here, okay? We can see this on dot plots as well and stem and leaf plots and, and what have you. So uh, again, there's just a, a few things there to consider, okay? Thanks for watching.